Uh, next, I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy. Uh, thank the chairman. Uh, thank you for appearing before the committee. Uh, director, uh, I served in the U.S. Attorney's Office, prosecuted 922 G1, 924 C, uh, felons in possession and so forth. Um, uh, I would say that, uh, well, let me ask you this question. There are different definitions of mass shootings. We've said that I think 160 or something mass shootings this year or something in that zip code. However you define that. I believe. In, in, no, so we get to the question. In, in your reporting of that, um, how many of those shooters uh, can you report were on medication? I, I don't know the facts to be able to answer. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I think that's an important thing, and I'd like ATF to get us an answer on the 165 uh, mass shootings, how many were on medication. Um, how many were from single uh, uh, parent homes without fathers? Again, those may not be all ATF investigations, and I don't know the answer to that. Well, but it's important you guys collect data on virtually everything. I think it's really important for us to know that. Can you tell us how many of the perpetrators were, for example, involved in social media and, and certain websites, or how many of them had dropped out of school? Uh, again, I don't have a number on that. I, okay. I would agree with you that those are all significant problems that we have to address as a society. Well, I think that's something that's really important, and I want ATF to get us that information because uh, that has been missing from a lot of the conversation. As we as we focus in on the weapons being being used, I want us to make sure that we're very clear about the nature of the individuals that are carrying out these heinous acts. What is happening in our societies? What is happening to our young men? What is happening to young men in fatherless homes? What is happening to people on medication? What is happening with respect to mental health? Because if we look at the data and we see what has occurred, particularly under COVID, and we look at both suicide rates up like 10%, murder rates spiked like 40%, uh, and I think with the use of firearms, uh, we see that we had a serious mental health issue and the use of medication. I think that's something the ATF ought to focus on. But here's something that I want to, uh, to ask about. You all had an ATF agent named Brandon Garcia who submitted a resignation letter, I think you're probably familiar with, in which uh, he wrote, ATF has been spending a significant amount of time talking about and changing the course of this agency to focus on, quote, the guns, end quote. Agent Garcia also noted the following. Last year, our headquarters spent pretty much the entire year talking about the vaccine and threatening termination for those who wouldn't get it. Uh, the deputy director threatened to prosecute agents for lying to a federal agent if we did not appropriately update our vaccination status in the system. He also noted uh, that they were um, saying nothing about holding people accountable for the crimes they commit unless it supports their agenda. I think that's a question that I think we all want to know the answer to, which is, are we focusing on going after criminals carrying out bad acts, harming the American people every day. for use of guns, every day. as opposed to targeting law-abiding citizens for the use of for having a, a, a weapon that they are entitled to be able to have under the Second Amendment? We, we are indeed focusing on taking violent criminals and trigger pullers out of our community. Of course, working with state and lo local law enforcement, right? Every day, and you know that from being a PSN prosecutor. I was a PSN prosecutor also. Those are very important. And with respect to the causes of, of, of these acts, I think it is correct there are numerous causes. ATF is not responsible for addressing them. Of course, Congress, you look at the whole field of play as to what uh, drives but, violent but, but crime. But does the director agree that it would be a very important thing for us as Congress and for ATF to focus on the mental state and the, and the medicines being used by the perpetrators of these crimes? I, I think certainly that public policymakers ought to focus on that. Well, well I, ATF, I appreciate that. I'm, an and I'm going to run out of time. One, one other, because I got limited time. Sure. One other question with respect to the, the, the issue we're dealing here with the pistol braces. Uh, we know for sure that the um, United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit has overwhelmingly ruled that ATF uh, overstepped its authority when it published the final rule that classified bump stocks as machine guns. Now, to make sure that it's very clear that I'm an equal opportunity basher of tyranny, the Trump administration issued that bump stock rule, and they were wrong to do it. They shouldn't have done it. They did it. The Fifth Circuit struck it down. The fact is, what we know about this rule, the pistol brace rule, is that it is the exact same overstepping of power. And, that I, and, and I think the director ought to respond to, to that question in just one minute, but I want to ask one question uh, pretty quick uh, right here as I wrap up. Do you believe that Americans have an individual right to bear arms? Uh, the Supreme Court has said that. So, yes, that the, the, the Supreme Court has said in the Heller decision and then in the Bruin decision uh, that the that Second it is an Amendment, individual right the to bear Second arms. Amendment gives the individual right to keep and bear arms. And so what I would just suggest to the director is that when we know the Fifth Circuit has slapped down a regulatory overreach with respect to bump stocks under a Republican president, and now we have a effort here under pistol braces, 
which is looking backwards to take a piece of plastic, as my friend from Kentucky said, to add to a weapon, and to say to someone who had a lawful product for the entire time they've had it, to now say that it is unlawful, would the director agree that that is something that the Fifth Circuit is very well going to look at and say that is an overstep of the executive branch over legislative authority? I yield back. You may answer the question. As with the, the bump stock case, um, it is in litigation. Um, different circuits have come out different ways on that, and is, I think there's a petition for certiorari before the Supreme Court. ATF's position on that, I mean, the department's position, uh, is laid out in hundreds of pages of briefs. Uh, the first ruling, uh, which actually came out of uh, a district court in the Fifth Circuit on the, on the stabilizing base rule, found that it lived within the statute uh, and was lawful under the APA, at least as a preliminary injunction matter. But the Fifth Circuit has held that it, it, it has, has said that it the is courts, Again, yeah. the gentleman yields. 